Hello, my name is Byland, and I'm making this video to serve three purposes. The first is to promote Software Defined Radio as a method for receiving HF. The second is to explore unusual transmissions on HF. And the third is to ask you, the audience, questions about some unknown signals. And a little disclaimer, most of this is purely speculative. So let's start by looking at what we have here. This is HDSDR playing back some recordings that I made using a USRP and a WBX daughter board. In addition, there's a transverter that uh, adds 60 megahertz to any incoming frequency. So that's how I got HF up to the range in which the WBX operates. This is the uh, antenna that was being used at the time, a, a big long wire. And the bandwidth here is actually one megahertz. So I'm going to explore a couple of signals here and also put them through GNU radio for additional analysis. So if we start off, we can see that we have our good old weather facts here on the left hand side. During the course of this and the other recordings, you'll see whistlers coming through from the left and uh, zooming across to the right. There goes one there. Sometimes I wonder whether there, it is actually natural, uh, a natural phenomenon or whether it might be, say, an ionosonde scanning very quickly. You'll see that they all actually move across at the same rate. The angle of the line is the same. Uh, I know that commercial ionosondes sweep slower than that, but maybe it's a whistler or maybe it's uh, man-made, I'm not entirely sure. If we move along a little bit, you can see in here, we've just caught an interesting signal, a little preamble there, single term preamble, and then a short burst of data, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, if we move across a little further, we should be able to see more of that bursty data there. We capture this here. That is the Oakland Oceanic Flight Information Service. Next along here we have the familiar Link 11 or TADIL mode A. This is a military mode. Uh, you can see here that there's initially the Doppler tone and then the subcarriers that contain the data and then a synchronization tone at the end. It's a, it's a bursty mode. And then we have some RITI. And then here, just on the left hand side of the ham band, we've got Chinese over the horizon radar. And this sounds awfully similar to various other recordings of the same thing at the same frequency. Unfortunately, it seems to encroach here on the edge of the handband. If we continue, you'll also notice that there is this narrow band data format here, which is STANAG4285. And if you have a look, for example, at the Wavecom information page for this protocol, you'll see that it's also in military mode, and there are various ways of encoding user data. Uh, it's wrapped up in channel probes so that the receiver equalizer can sense the uh, state of the HF channel. Obviously, there's lots of fading that it needs to take into account and so on. It's quite a cool mode. And also, if we look over here, there's actually a little bit of RIDI underneath the OTH as well. We've got the familiar handband, but in addition, there's also this sweeper here, which is unusual. You can hear it in the background. I'm not entirely sure who that belongs to either. So let's look at the next recording now. The second recording is centered at just above 5 megahertz and we can see some automatic link establishment ALE right here and here is a strong STANAG4285 signal. There are also some weak sweepers, this one right here and a weaker one right next to that STANAG signal. Another interesting thing to note here is we have a standard whistler but there are also these blocks that move across the spectrum at a slightly different rate. If we actually tune 
to one of the blocks and wait for it to come around again. Here it comes. Once more. You can hear that there's some sort of a signal there. I'm not sure whether this is interference or an artifact of my setup using the transverter, but uh, if you've seen anything like that before, please comment below. So let's just take a look at the Stanag signal now. We'll put this through GNU Radio. If I actually open up the flow graph in GNU Radio, you can see the baseband signal centered on that Stanag signal. And if we have a look at the cyclostationary analysis, then we see a peak here at 2.4 kilohertz, and this matches the Stanag board rate of 2400. If we have a look at the fast autocorrelation, then upon averaging, we see that there's a peak just after 100 milliseconds, and this matches the 106.6 repeater millisecond length of each frame in Stanag. So it's highly likely that if you were just to base decisions on this analysis that you would in fact be seeing a Stanag signal. Let's head back now and look at the right hand side of the spectrum here. You can see that there are more radar sounding signals. Here we actually have a sweeper crossing a radar signal and if you listen carefully there's some Morse code there as well. I'm not sure whether this is all combined coming from the same transmitter and they happen to overlap. But what is handy to do is take the frequency and put that into RF map. So if one does that, if one filters by that frequency, then these three sites appear on the west coast of Australia. And it turns out this is actually part of James Cook University's ACORN setup. This is a CSON. And this sounds remarkably like this could be a CSON, but it sounds a bit similar. And these are the points. If we were to open up a site and draw the links, then you can see these sites are all connected to one another. If you head to their website, you can check out the Integrated Marine Observing System, and they link to the uh, equipment supplies, CODAR, they have various uh, HF ocean radar systems. And that brings us to the end of this recording, but one final point on the Whistler. If you were to look up Whistlers, you might encounter this particular uh, diagram. This is a Whistler, but it's in the very low frequency range, as you can see on the scale here on the left-hand side. And you have spherics plus these whistlers, but they don't appear to move in a linear fashion like they do on this spectrum, which is part of uh, my curiosity as to what these ones are here. So let's move on to the next recording. The third recording is centered at just above 14 megahertz. And we can hear some really here, and a very faint Stanag signal to the right of that. Further along, we have some weather facts again. But the most striking feature in this particular recording is this. This is some sort of radar signal as well. And if we put this frequency into our RF map, we get ACORN once more. This is the slave station. And this is the master station. This is on the east coast of Australia. If we draw the link, we can see that they're associated with one another. And if we actually put this signal into GNU radio, we can see that we have the baseband signal once again here. If we have a look at the autocorrelation, we can see very strong peaks popping out the first one being at 20 milliseconds, so this is indicative of a periodic 20 millisecond repeating signal. And if we have a look at the waterfall, we can actually see what looks to be sweeping across the spectrum. This is indicated by the slightly uh, 
diagonal lines here as they sweep across in the channel. And it must be doing this at a rate of 20 milliseconds, which is why we get those peaks in the fast autocorrelation. It's just that they're happening so quickly that it uh, looks like this back on the HDSDR spectrum. Finally, we can see here on the left hand side we get that block happening again at the very end. There it was. Slightly stronger and you can definitely see something coming out on the demodulated output. The frequency of this recording is just above that of the previous one and you can see the ACORN signal that we looked at before. But in this one, have a look at these whistlers here. This one in particular is odd because it contains these discontinuities and it's not as smooth and linear as the previous ones we've seen. There are also these other odd carriers moving about in a non-linear fashion. I've heard that certain radios you can key down and change the transmit frequency while the transmitter is actually powered up, so perhaps some jokers are doing that. You can also see here on the very right hand side a weaker radar signal coming through. And also there is a sweeper that is about to start up here on the left of the ACORN signal, operating at a much slower rate. The next recording at 16.653 MHz contains some interesting and unusual things. Firstly, there's this one here. You can see there are eight subcarriers, and this is reminiscent of ALE. If you actually have a look at some of the details of ALE, then it mentions here the second generation ALE, and you can see here on the waterfall the eight carriers. The problem is, though, that this is slightly narrower than what we have here on the spectrum. So I'm not entirely sure whether this is ALE or, or something else, another mode. Additionally, there is a very strong Stanag signal here. And because it's nice and strong, you can actually take it out and put it into GNU Radio for further analysis. If we actually have a look, then you can see the baseband signal here in the center of the frequency plot. Let's demodulate it now. We know that it's supposed to be eight phase shift keying, order eight, and you can actually see the eight points coming out on the constellation there. So that matches the standard specification. Let's now use the SIGMIRA decoder to try and pull out the information within that file. So we'll open that demodulated file. I've already set the center frequency of the signal here so that it decodes it correctly. And you can notice in the top left-hand corner of the Stanag decoder, it has acquired sync. And the output of the forward error corrector is also looking much better. Once it locks on, you can see that it actually is decoding some test signals and some French. This is actually uh, a French test message that's sent out on a number of different frequencies. That would be their equivalent of the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I'll wrap up now with this last recording at 17.905 megahertz. Firstly, there's this strong signal. Might sound like Stanag, but it's actually DRM, Digital Radio Mondial, which is a OFDM signal, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. It's a standard that allows for transmission of near FM quality audio over HF. It's a really, really neat mode. Here is an analysis that I've done on it previously. The goal was to confirm exactly what sort of class of DRM it was. There are various classes with different uh, magic numbers. So you should be able to recognize this from the left. Part of the analysis includes building or calculating what's known as the cyclic autocorrelation function, which you then can graph as a mesh. This has particular properties that is indicative of uh, DRM. There's also a bit of MATLAB code if you want to try it out yourself. But it's also possible to do in GNU Radio. I won't do a live demo, but this is the sort of flow graph that you can use. And once you actually put it through the fast autocorrelation, you'll see an initial peak here. This is the unguarded symbol time. And then if you adjust the 
cyclostationary lag appropriately, you'll see these other peaks forming, the first of which is at the total symbol duration. And these values then correspond to the class B version of DRM. This is in fact a signal broadcast by Radio New Zealand International. So it's possible to tune in with a DRM decoder and listen and get the actual audio out. There's something else that's interesting in this recording. Somewhere over here should begin any second. A sweeper of changing variable rate. There it is. So you can hear it changing over time. Let's start again and simultaneously put it through GNU radio, feeding it through the fast autocorrelation sync to have a really good demo of why the, the sync is quite useful. So let's start that again. Keep an eye on the first major peak you see. See how it moves slowly to the right which means that the periodic signal is increasing in duration. And that matches with what we hear. It's effectively a sweeper, but the rate at which it's sweeping is slowing down with each block. And now you begin to see those diagonal lines much more clearly on the spectrum. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you want to experiment yourself, then you can grab a USRP or a FunCube dongle, HDSDR, and you can also download this XDIO plugin that I created, which allows you to connect to a FunCube dongle or USRP directly from your computer, or over a network. The USRP one is a USB device, but this actually allows you to situate it elsewhere, away from your computer, so instead of using coax, you can use CAT5 to send the baseband data across. This will also let you relay the signals here into GNU Radio using uh, this UDP relay into a UDP source, or you can encapsulate it in Bore IP and use the Bore IP receiver in GNU Radio for uh, further control over your packets. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any comments, then please leave them below. Thank you very much for watching.